member parliament for Adakulu constituency, or your ranking member on the Roads and Transport Committee. You miss as a motorway. I didn't see any jay ama moto ya bedroom for me so at a honorable morning morning uh, to you and morning to your uh, listeners and viewers uh so you know uh yeah uh, uh and yeah and yeah that good but i'll, uh, I'll, 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 I'll yeah, lift yeah, it up uh, yeah if i mix it yeah if i mix it honorable motorway why is it the way it is well uh first of all the motorway as we we see it now was not uh built initially to to do what it's doing mm. uh and just like any road uh there's a lifespan uh i think the motorway uh has reached a stage where it needs rehabilitation mm. and you'll be surprised to know that despite all that you said about the dangers on it it still remains one of the best roads in ghana <laughs> because if you were to even go to part of accra uh, as it's coming to rain now, I'm sure people, some people are either going to lock themselves up in their room because when it rains, the, the access to their uh, communities will be cut off. Mm. So we have a general problem on the road uh, network in, in our country, mm. and it, it costs a lot of money to do it. But we must do it. The, the motorway was originally designed to maybe facilitate movement of goods from the port uh, out of Accra mm. uh, and then to elsewhere. The, and then the time it was built, as you know, they were all they were, East Legon didn't exist, Trasaco didn't exist, all those uh, Spintex Road and the factories on both sides of the road never existed. Uh, surely there was no trotro uh, station uh, along the motorway. Today mm. we have seen all that happening. So the capacity of the motorway itself is uh, has been called to to into a question. Uh, mm. I mean, we we require interchanges along the motorway so that traffic can flow in and out safely uh, and effectively all those things are issues that we we need to deal with and indeed the, because it's concrete if it were to be asphalt uh, normally there's a wearing cost maybe uh, 50 70 100 mil wearing cost that uh, can uh, uh, usually after a period rather 10 or 15 years mm. you can remove the wearing cost and then relay it so that it is smoother but because mm. it's concrete and the, the, the joint you're talking about, the expansion joint, obviously, when you have a large span of concrete, you ought to have expansion joints so that the cracks don't go beyond a certain uh, level. But I must say the motorway has lived uh, quite well, uh, knowing how long it's been built. It's a, a reinforced concrete. So when we have spots developing uh, defects, all we need to do is to go back and remedy those sections uh, 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 I mean, periodically. That is why in every budget, there's a, a portion called uh, routine maintenance and periodic maintenance. That is supposed to be done even on roads that are assumed to be a uh, good road. Mm. The problem is if you look at the budget, the expenditure on those things keep falling back uh, all the time. So we do really have a, 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 an issue. The motorway should have been uh, reconstructed by now. I know uh, those who built the Temaport, the MPS, had a proposal to to uh, add the motorway as part of the the project at the point in time we didn't go through and the world bank started uh, trying to uh, fund a study and then at the point in time they also backed off and uh, so we are where we are currently and uh, uh, we can't say that until we reconstruct the motorway uh, we can't do anything about it or indeed we can we can uh, uh, remedy some of the dangerous uh, spots that are on the motorway currently and uh, I agree with you, one of the things that are quite dangerous on the motorway now, because uh, the speed limit on the motorway is 100 kilometers. So when somebody is on the way, especially, uh, it's also uh, an Equus highway. So assuming mm -hmm. somebody is from Nigeria or, um, let's say, Cote d'Ivoire on that road, he's not expecting to see trotters uh, coming in and out. But sadly, this morning, if you go, that is what is happening. And the trotter drivers, some of them deliberately just slow down uh, touting for the passenger. They, they, they slow down looking whether somebody will pop out somewhere so that they, they stop and pick them. Those ones are implementation, I mean, uh, management issues. I mean, the MTTD can, can deploy along the motorway to find out whether we should maybe have dedicated places that can safely be used uh, for that or we stop it all together so that we don't wait, as you're saying, for the, the worst to happen before we all start shouting. Uh, in fact, I've also got data on how many vehicles have been crashing into the 
abandoned toll booths, including this week, mm. uh, uh, because it's not being used. Why? Because when the toll booths were in use, uh, drivers know automatically when you get there, you must slow down to go through the, the, the booth and pay your toll. Today, they know there's nobody there. So they go through at speeds which are beyond what they should go. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, some of them veer off and crash into the, the barriers and other things. So we've made a motorway quite a, a hazardous place to, 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 uh, to use and which ought not to be the, the, the case. So that is the summary of our situation on the motorway. Uh, I, I feel we could do better in terms of uh, maintaining the motorway because we keep, we keep taking uh, taxis and everything. We, in fact, until recently when the, the minister uh, illegally or the government through propaganda decided to suspend the collection of uh, uh, tolls on our roads. And I can tell you, uh, we've done the, the survey. No driver in this country believes that they can use roads without paying tolls. What they always cry for is show us what you've been doing with the tolls you've been collecting. So if you decide that because you're going to get e levy, you're not going to take tolls. I mean, even in advanced countries, Britain, America, we still toll roads. What makes Ghana so special that we think that we can do this without this? And now we've actually borrowed money to improve the toll booth. We, we, we borrowed money to automate the gates, put CCTV and quite some sophisticated things there. And a few months time, we decided to abandon them. And I can tell you, we are even contracting loans to build roads today. And we are still putting in money to build uh, toll booths till today. So we borrow money to build toll booths and then we abandon them. So that is the tragedy of our country currently. So are, are we saying that we, we can't do anything much about the motorway, especially seeing that construction initially was done with concrete and all attempts to fill with asphalt has not worked or yielded any positive results? Oh, no, no, it worked. I mean, I remember very well when uh, a, a portion on the, um, okay, uh, heading towards Accra mm. came being quite significantly some time ago. I remember, uh, I think, uh, what do you call it, Ibrahim Mohammed's company and others uh, were stepped in and did something, remedial work. I think every road ought to be going through mm. a routine maintenance. So all I'm saying is that the large portion of the motorway is still, it's, it's still uh, user-friendly, uh, it's still good. So the spots that are bad, we could go there and repair them. And mm. I don't even feel that if we're going to do the motorway again, we should remove the tons of concrete and forced concrete. We should just remedy the, the, the defective parts and then lay a new wearing course on, on it, which will last us for, uh, for, for some time. No, no road in this world is meant to last forever. Not even human beings last forever, let alone road. So it is about having a road in such a way that routinely we can uh, do some work to remedy the defective parts. That's all it is. So the, if the answer, if the question is, can't we do anything? We can surely do something about it. We can, we can, we can go on that road. So, identify so, so the, why are we not doing part. it? Well, because I'm not sure whether government has been uh, allocating any significant amount of money for that. Because you see, uh, doing maintenance work on the motorway is different from uh, doing pothole patching. Like you said, it's concrete. Yes, you can you can have a way of using a certain level of uh, asphalt to to remedy small portions. But uh, obviously, uh, in those who did material science, will let you know that uh, there's no way you can uh, bond uh, concrete and uh, how do you call it asphalt together forever, mm -hmm. uh, especially when they are just cracks. It's, it's not going to uh, bond forever. So we ought to have a solution that that works. And so far, we haven't deployed that. And um, if I look at the budget, I can I can tell without a doubt that there isn't enough money allocated for that kind of work on, on the, on the mot motorways. In ending our conversation, let me ask about a general situation of roads in the country. It, it was supposed to be a year of roads, and yet all we experience from constituencies and communities and assemblies, everybody is crying about their bad roads. Well, I, I think... I I think the current government knows that all of us enjoy slogans. So one constituency, one million dollars. So everybody gets happy. Mm. My constituency is going to get four million dollars in four, four years. One district, one factory. Everybody feels there's going to be a factory in his backyard employing people. Uh, what? Uh, uh, and all sorts of, I mean, uh, free mm. education. I mean, I don't know how many people send their children to school this morning without, uh, I mean, at, uh, attempting to pay extra, extra classes and other things. I've seen a, an article from the university saying that 
some of the products from the SHS are not uh, are not are not very good because when mm. somebody gets aggregate 40 and other things, I mean, what, what what exactly are you going to do? And so the year of road came as the same thing, believing that NAPCO, yes, we NAPCO, we are going to employ all the the youth. People believed it. Today we are even arguing as to whether they've been the, the program has been terminated or have been innovated uh, to another one. And so year of road was one of those things. And I kept saying that the first year of road, what I saw in the budget in terms of real money allocated for road was just about one billion Ghana cities. If you consider the fact that an average kilometer of road to build is about $1.2 million. $1.2 million. So what is $1 billion supposed to do? In the, in the current budget, it's about just about $2 billion Ghana cities. And if you consider the fact that we all contracted over $10 billion Ghana cities, that, those are certificates that are in the system. That mm. contractors have worked and have paid certificates and they are due for payment. About 10 billion Ghana cities. We are not able to pay them. And by the close of today, that 10 billion will go up because every day new certificates are coming. And the quantum of projects on site, on the road sectors we are doing, is about 40 billion. Coco Road alone have awarded projects over 14 billion Ghana cities. And then add the rest, Sino Hydro, whatever. So on the books of Ministry of Road and, and Highways, there's a possible 40 billion cities worth of, the, of, of, of pro projects. If you consider that the 2016, the whole appropriation of the 2016 budget was 50 billion, that's just about 50 billion. And we, we are talking about 40 billion on roads alone. You can imagine the size of problems we have in our country in terms of road. That is why you can't see much action uh, on, on the road. And to make it worse, whenever we generate money, that ought to be used for road. The finance ministry deliberately, because of this uh, obnoxious or backward way of saying something called, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, capping. So uh, we, we road fund generate two billion Ghana City, hoping that at least the two billion will go into road infrastructure. Mm. Then we take about half of that money for consumption. We generate money for education. When you pay your uh, how do you get fund uh, get levy and everything. Your mind tells you that money goes into fund education. Sadly, a chunk of that money goes to pay Dachi and something uh, an STV created of, upon which they have gone to borrow money. So we generate the money. It's not as if we are not generating any money at all. But the way we apply the money, I agree that we need to generate even more money to be able to fix the roads. But even the little we generate, it's not able to help. The minority actually made a commitment that we feel the road tolls needed to be increased. I mean, we are realistic. Road tolls needed to be increased. Currently, if I use a Land Cruiser and I cross the motorway, I pay ten, uh, uh, one city. I don't think anybody will cry for me, even if I'm asked to pay 40. Because when you drive Land Cruiser, it means you are slightly well to do. Then maybe we can look at how Uber and taxi, we can cushion them. But sadly, what we, what we saw was a populist uh, action. Oh, let's cancel the road toll. The road toll was getting us about 80 million uh, 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 Ghana city a year. We feel we can augment that to be at least 200, 300 million uh, uh, Ghana city. But guess what? Even that 80 million is gone to the wind. Do you not believe that if that 80 million Ghana city was available, we can even say that use 20 million to fix the, the defective part of the motorway permanently, that would have been a solution. But we are where we are. Quickly, before we end the conversation, Yesterday, we were having a conversation about this motorway issue, and my colleague in the studio raised a matter of how some $570 million had been promised or allocated for this whole motorway we are talking about. I think the project was supposed to start in December of last year. That $570 million, was it really utilized, or has it even been allocated in the first place? Well, first of all, as far as we in the minority are concerned. Mm. There's no project uh, called $570 million for Accra Tema Motorway. Mm. There was an attempt to use a PPP process to reconstruct the motorway. Uh, somewhere in 2020, the government itself uh, canceled that process because all the bidders were not responsive enough. Sadly, mm. the government clandestinely went into uh, a sole source agreement with a company called Mota Angel, a foreign company. Mm. And that company is no longer required to bring the money. That company is basically in the country as a contractor, requesting government to go and borrow $570 million and give to them to do the project. 
Uh, mm. You and I will know that that is, uh, uh, in the first place, that is in breach of Article 1815 of the Constitution, which mm. requires that if government enters into any economic uh, uh, venture with any foreign entity, that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, agreement must come to Parliament. That mm. didn't come to Parliament. Mm. Uh, the part of that contract says that if after three months the parties are not able to come to terms and start the work, that contract would have been deemed uh, null and void. Uh, that pro contract was signed in 2016, by 20, uh, 16 December 2020. Uh, we are in uh, uh, June, uh, almost in June now, and that contract hasn't been activated because what? Government is expecting Ghana Infrastructure Fund to go and look for money and then give to Muta Angel to come and do uh, that, that project. Uh, I look at that contract, and that contract, a portion of the contract during negotiation says that the contract price as envisaged by the engineers at the Ministry of Road and Highways, which I believe are, are truthful, uh, is in, uh, has been inflated by 39%. How on earth can somebody say that a, 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 a price quoted by a sole source contractor is up and above 39%, yet the government went ahead to sign the contract at the, for the same price? That can only mean that somebody is looking for a personal interest. So as far as the NDC is concerned, we don't recognize that there's a valid contract between government of Ghana and anybody to build a craft and a motorway. That contract is a fraudulent contract, and we will not accept it. So mm. we need to find another way of coming back to find the money to build a craft and a motorway. Because as far as we are concerned, that $570 million dollar contract with Motor Angels is illegal. It is, it is, it is 39% inflated. According to pages of that same contract, how on earth can a patriotic human being, Ghanaian, sign a, a contract like that? Unless there's personal interest. Hmm. Honorable, well, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. Member of Parliament for Adaklu Constituency joining us uh, today on the show.